Hello everybody, this is Badge Wild, and we are back with another ship review. And today we're reviewing a really cool ship that I have on my Steam Workshop. And this is the IWL Sentinel Class Corvette. It is an escort uh, used to escort, you know, make bigger ships and everything. So we're going to sit back here and just take a nice look at this thing from tip to tip. So you guys can see just what all this ship goes into. And I'm going to compliment on some of my reasoning for building this ship the way I built it. Just so it can help other people, you know, maybe inspire you all to come up with some really cool stuff. And, and help anyone that may be having a block or someone who's new to space engineers. So starting at the front of this ship, you'll see we've got a single camera. This is kind of standard issue to run the side rocket pods here. We also have this nice integral shape. And this is something that people ask me about at this point at the very center at the very end of this ship. Why is it pointed like this? Um, because most of the time when this ship is striking uh, targets, its primary target is fighters and ships that are smaller than it is. Can it attack larger ships? Yes, it can threaten a larger ship. It can attack a larger ship. But its primary target, its primary prey are enemy fighters. Uh, you'll see this as you go down, looking at all the PDC cannons that are on this thing, all the anti-fighter capabilities. This thing is designed to also be very fast, very quick, and very lethal. So looking at this thing with this large bow section, and also if you look at the uh, turrets in the back as well, you'll notice that these turrets are staggered and set outward. It can put a lot of forward firepower down very quickly, and that is because this ship is designed to go right into the fighter's and take the fight directly to them, or go right at a gunboat and take the fight directly to the gunboat. Uh, it is, even if they're shooting back, it's got a lot of armor in the front. And statistically, I figured out by playing the game, statistically on a fast ship like this, you are going to take a lot of impact to the front of the ship. So the front of your ship, the bow, kind of you got to build your ships um, with the idea of a tank. More armor in front, less on the sides and on top. In the Sentinel's case, most of the armor is done on t the armor that would normally be on top is probably maybe one layer thick, maybe two in some places. Uh, most of the armor on the sides is about two to three layers thick, depending on how important the system is. And then you got up here where it's almost six blocks thick in some areas. Now, over here, you'll see this vent porting. Look here with these armor plates. That is not there just for looks. That is there to provide a vent area because when these uh, hydrogen thrusters fire up, any thruster fires up, these blocks are not hit by the thrust cone. So they will not be damaged. However, if someone comes in and tries to be sneaky and you know try to strafe some of the systems here, they're not gonna get as many bullets on. This increases the ship's survivability. I'm telling you, when I play with this ship, the bow of this thing gets just gnarly looking, <laughs> it gets torn up. So continuing on, those are my reasoning for building the ship the way it's built. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start moving down because there's other things we'll have to get to to see it. So starting along the side here, we have a nice rocket launcher. This is the primary gun battery. You can probably replace this with any other type of gun you wanna put on here, just to give it a little more firepower for your own playthrough, whatever. Uh, we have two PDC units, interior turrets right here, as well as a double barrel assault cannon. This is mirrored on the other side, so you don't have to worry about too much. We have a connector, entry point, four more hydrogen thrusters with the same vent port system around it, and they're exited out. You'll notice that this ship has a lot of sloped armor on the sides of the ship. And this is because, like I said, the sides of this thing is where most of the armor is at. It is also for the two top turrets, which I'll get to in a minute, but those are flak cannons. They are designed to hit, they're the primary anti-fighter weapon system on this thing. Uh, the CWAS guns that we have right over here are designed to you know, just be an accent add-on as well as this other interior turret here and the IWL symbol for uh, you know my faction. But anyway, the concept here is when a fighter comes in, this ship will turn to the side, narrowing itself, because if you look at the top here, you'll see it is much wider up top than it is in the bottom. So you are turning it to a more narrower profile with more armor and with the hardest hitting weapons pointed at your enemy. Uh, you're also going to get three of your PDCs, probably even four 
of the interior turrets locking on and engaging. Continuing on, we have a custom quad gun CWAS turret here that I've built. Y'all seen me build these before. We also have another interior turret, nice antenna. And in the back here, we have one honking engine system. Going up over the top, we have our laser antenna. We have our hydrogen thrusters here with the vent porting. We also have these atmospheric thrusters to allow us to go into atmosphere with a few um, armor blocks on the side. We also have, coming up to the midsection here, we have <clears throat> our quad barrel anti-air guns. Uh, there's a new way of building these. I will be showing y'all how to build the new way to build these so that they're way more effective. Uh, continuing up here, we have just simply the bow section of the ship. Not much to really look at. And we have our two B PDCs. Going on the bottom, not much. Just two PDCs down at the bottom. Your little interior turrets. One more flat gun. And the vent porting for your hydrogen thrusters to keep them safe. All in all, like I said, this is a thinly built ship so that most of the armor that is hit is forward facing. Uh, it takes a lot of guns, a lot of drones to kill this thing. One, because it is very fast. It can outrun anything that any kind of fighter that is not paying attention, it can outrun it. Uh, if it has to, it can keep pace with them. But it's very maneuverable, very fast, as you'll see in a minute. But we're going to go through here and look on in the interior of this ship. Hop on here. We break through the first airlock, which is mirrored on the other side. We have our armory right here, where uh, if you're doing an assault with a ship, you can grab your guns and your small arm division can run up right next to a station, jump right out and engage. Pushing over here, we go into the main area where we have <clears throat> suits and tools and all that stuff for whatever little mission you would need. This is kind of like a small mini ready room. Continuing forward here, we have our very simplistic med bay with a light panel here on the side of the wall, you know, just to make things easier to see. And we've got our medical bay area right here. You can come in, heal up, recharge, and respawn. Also got a nice desk for the doctor. Heading in this direction, we have a mess hall <clears throat> because I believe in making functional ships and uh, functional ships need a mess to operate. If you're feeling claustrophobic, that's a good thing because that's how this ship is designed. Uh, Corvettes are supposed to be very small, very you know, claustrophobic kind of feeling ships. They're the smallest fieldable vessel in a Navy that can go long distance. We have a set of lockers here for more storage. Continuing on, we go down to the first level, which is where the uh, bedroom area is at, or living quarters. And because of IWL lore, these doors and these rooms are built like prison cells at Alamo Station. So Alamo Station was a penal was a, a mining area converted to a penal colony, and that's where the IWL got its start. Uh, the drone war breaks out basically, and the IWL uh, are abandoned prisoners who band together with a couple of pirate smugglers who are running from the from the drone army or the DCA, and they put up a bit of a fight. And they end up winning and become a mercenary battalion that run as basically, as they like to call it, the tax man now, because they're pretty much getting paid to take care of everyone else. So you see in here, you got two beds, access to your, uh, <clears throat> ah, access to the uh, uh, inventory of the ship. We also have its own life support system, as well as the shower and toilet combo. And for Aaron from Last End Gamers, these are mirrored. So we have two toilets and two showers basically on the ship. Same exact thing. We'll head this way in a minute, but right now we're going to head over this direction and go up here to the upper area. Up here we have access to our other gyros, our hydrogen tanks, our beacon, uh, more cargo, our oxygen tank, and our hydrogen oxygen conversion system. You can also access batteries, and you have an access here for the, uh, what is this? Oh yeah, the jump drive. Can be accessed here. We've got the new blocks coming in. I have recently upgraded this with the new blocks, so we have the ability to. We now have a nice little port here. I'm going to turn on my lights because this is supposed to be kind of dark looking. But starting from uh, the very back here, we have the main hydrogen or ma hydrogen main hyperdrive area. We have three more gyroscopes, and we have an access port back here to access the primary thruster should it ever get damaged so we can get 
that back up and running and get it out of dodge if we have to. Uh, just nice little deal going on. Heading back over here, we've got our one of our four nuclear reactors, which will, powers the entire ship. Going this much further, we have a couple of heat vents so that when we do a jump, these will open up. Uh, very nice. Looks like the ship's trying to vent. It'll turn the area kind of a yellowish glow as the light kicks on. It's supposed to be nice, bright, and intense. So it's kind of be, you know, pushing out some heat. I need it. More gyroscopic stabilizers on this part of the vessel. And going in here, we have a storage area for guns, uh, tools, gravity generator, and four turret control stations to put whatever kind of custom turrets you want to put in here. Continuing from there, you'll see this. Uh, that's odd. Did I forget to close something? That must have been what I forgot to close. Tell me that's it. Yep, there's a leak somewhere back there. <laughs> Just have to remember that next time. Anyway, continuing on after that embarrassment. We can go up here to this area of the ship and head up to the main bridge area. This is actually the bridge. We have a projector right here in the middle of the floor with some tables around it. You know, it looks snazzy and nice. A couple of angle blocks to make it look good. Screens are not loading in for some reason. This has been a bug ever since Warfare Update. These screens will not load properly like they're supposed to. They will over time, but anyway, let's hop in here and take a look at the Sentinel right now, just so you can see just how fast and effective this thing is. It is quick now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, turning this sucker on, we have all of our weapons. We can tell the PDCs to engage stuff. This is uh, The pilot is very limited on what he can do. The other two... Uh, chairs can access guns and fire. They can also tell the guns to do more detailed stuff. But to show you guys just how fast this thing is, watch the speed here. So three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. About eleven seconds. We're at maximum speed. And this thing can maintain this speed for a very long time because of these two hydrogen thrusters. You can see how fast it comes down. Atmospheric capable, mind you. Very agile ship when you're going in and turning it. Like I said, the way this ship operates is if a fighter were to come in from maybe a high angle like that or come in like this, then the ship captain would then turn the ship into that direction, allowing most of the flak cannons and a vast majority of the PDCs to just open up on the target. Uh, coming down on top, it doesn't help. So it's purposefully built like this to force the pilot to use the strongest sections of the ship to engage fighters with. And uh, it, it handles drones, it handles fighters. It, you almost have to be... I think the only time this ship has failed is because I was fighting a station and about 10 other drones at the same time, which is impressive considering it was dropping drones about one every minute. It has the firepower to deal with most of your problems and it looks good in the process. Um, but as far as jump range capable, this thing maxes out. The reason it has only one jump drive is all you have to do to get from point to point B. This thing can jump to the maximum range here. Let's just grab the GPS coordinates here. New from current position. We've got a new point here, head over this way, number eight here, and do a jump. Minimum jump distance is 5,000 meters. Let's see here, are we jumping? No, let's see here. Oh, wait, I know what's going on. I've accidentally got the uh, the jump drive is set up not for a blind jump. It's set up to jump to a coordinate. There we go. Done that. And do ourselves a nice little blind jump here. Five, four, three, two, one, gone. And now that we're here, spin back around here, we have almost jumped the entire distance. In other words, this thing is just the tiniest bit under the max jump range for a single jump drive. So it does not really need 
another jump drive to operate. And just to show you all the, the impressiveness of the engine room back here, we'll head on back. You notice everything's more glowy. Now the vent port systems are opening. Love these new uh, vent blocks in the Warfare update. They are awesome. And, and I'm also loving the new blocks that are coming in. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, of the Sentinel class. If y'all want to check this thing out, it is already on the Steam store right now. So y'all can easily grab hold of it, check it out, and play around with this ship. Anyway, everybody, I am Badger Wild saying stay safe, keep your powder dry, and I'm going to sign out now. Enjoy the Sentinel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.